All right, everyone. So today, before we go really solve partial differential equations, there's one other equation that I need to discuss, okay? And this equation is not that difficult. The most difficult thing is making sure I don't make a typo when I write these things, okay? Other than that, it is actually fairly straightforward. This is a type of a parametric differential equation. It's an ODE, such that the boundary value problem, which I didn't do before, I was mostly focusing on initial value problem. Now the boundary value problem have either trivial solutions or solutions involving orthogonal functions. That was the whole thing about this particular set of segments we have been covering uh, for a while now. But then an example equation from Storm Lewell, and I will generalize this, I'll give you the general form, but let's start with something. So why don't we start by solving this particular ODE. You can clearly see that this is an ODE. You can clearly see that this is homogeneous, right? And this is linear as well. And this time around, I will give you boundary value problem like this. Y of L is equal to zero as well. So I give you one boundary condition where X is equal to zero right over here. And I also give you one boundary condition when X is equal to L, right? Um, I'm not gonna solve it. It's actually fairly uh, you know, easy after we covered what we, we covered already. But the equation is going to look like this, cosine of alpha x plus c2 sine of alpha x, right? Um, the thing, right, it may jump at uh, you as well, is one of the solution, as I mentioned, it will be trivial solution where if c1 is equal to 0, c2 is equal to 0, it's actually, go, you know, satisfy this, right? Uh, but then the solution is like y is equal to 0. That's not really extremely useful to me, right, is it? Okay. So let's do this. Why don't I start with the first, uh, the very first boundary condition and let's just insert 0 will be equal to c1 cosine of 0 plus c2 of sine 0. Um, we have done this many times, sine 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1, right? What is here is, is this is 0 and I'm multiplying the c1 by 1. So you, you see that I'm going to get myself c1 is equal to 0. So that dropped out, okay? So let's go to the YL, the second boundary condition that I have as well. So it's going to look like this. Now this time around, as C1 is 0, I'm not going to write that. So I will have C2 sine alpha L. You know, I can't get rid of this trivial solution. You know, I can have still the C2 is equal to 0 is a solution, a proper solution. It's a trivial solution, but actually it's not very useful from the physics point of view for me. The more useful solution to me is this one, sine alpha L will be equal to 0. If the sine alpha L is equal to 0, we have done this many, many times. Um, this alpha L needs to be n pi, remember, from uh, Fourier series. So from here, if I go ahead and find the alpha, alpha will be n pi by L. Okay. One thing over here is look, look, look how I define it. We will discuss this in the PDEs, but uh, alpha is larger than 0. So from here, then n can be 1, 2, 3, it goes all the way to infinity. Okay. This is called eigenvalues okay but actually the solution itself which is y is equal to sine and pi by lx this is called eigenfunction okay it's called eigenfunction because this is a set right depending on my n value that you see over here i'm going to get a set of these uh, sine terms and these the set of these is orthogonal on the interval from 0 to L. Why do I say 0 to L? Because I have a boundary condition here at 0, the other one is defined at L. So it means 0 and L, I have this orthogonal set, okay? That is, uh, I can have, uh, let's do a little bit different. I'm actually go ahead and change these boundary conditions, okay? What I can give you this time around, let's move on to another color so we can differentiate it. I still have the same equation, but this time around I'll give you this y prime of 0 is equal to 0 y prime of L is equal to zero. So basically I'm looking at the slope or the derivative of this uh, function that I have, okay? And um, so in order to solve this, obviously I have to go ahead and find the y prime because I have to plug it in. And if I look at the solution, it's right over here, right? So if I take the derivative of this, you will get, you know, cosine will be sine and I will have minus alpha, right? And when I take the de derivative of this, I'll get plus alpha cosine alpha x, right? Let me write what I just said, so you're going to get minus alpha c1 sine alpha x plus alpha c2 cosine alpha x. So then let's use the first boundary condition. So let's use this y prime 0 is equal to 0. So from here I'll get minus 
alpha c1 sine of that will be zero right plus alpha c2 cosine will be one right which is cosine zero so you can see from here is equal to zero so then this doesn't really matter so i have to get my c2 is equal to zero okay so c2 is gone this time around the other one c1 was gone just to note and i'll use the second boundary condition that i have that is going to be alpha c1 sine alpha l is equal to zero so obviously c1 can be zero but uh, that is the trivial solution which i'm not interested in now i'll have sine alpha l is equal to zero looks very familiar to you right and so from him alpha is equal to n pi right so just like the before i get the same eigenvalues alpha is equal to n pi by l so same eigenvalues as before okay something to note but now if i look at the eigenfunction you're going to see that this is going to be cosine n pi by l times x okay so this is going to be my eigenfunction this time around all right what i've done so far is actually a special case of a something called regular storm level problem so i want to focus on this at this point okay so i want to generalize what i have been sol solving since the beginning of this particular set segment storm leo hill problem okay let's read right in the in red so basically this is a two-point boundary value problem just like what we have been doing and i can write this in this way d dx of r of x y prime plus q of x plus gamma which is alpha square you'll see and p of x which is actually a weight function we have covered this at the beginning of the orthogonal conversation we have been having so this is the equation and i'll give you uh, the boundary conditions that it's subjected to let's write this in different color so it's going to be a1 y of a plus b1 of y prime of a is equal to zero another boundary condition will be a2 y of b plus b2 y prime of b will be equal to zero as well so this is called regular storm louisville so i'm gonna you know abbreviate this sl uh, storm louisville problem okay but there's few uh, you know conditions that needs to be satisfied so r of x is greater than zero the weight function is greater than zero for every x in this particular interval a and b so a, a and b you can see where it's coming from okay um, and also you can see the p the q the r and r prime are all real valued functions as well as continuous in the same interval that i have been discussing okay and when i look at the boundary condition which i subject the equation to then a1 a b1 not both zero because then I'll, i'm not going to get any boundary condition same goes for uh, a2 b2 as well okay not both zero as well and the combination of this needs to be real not imaginary and it needs to be independent of uh, gamma which is alpha squared as you will see soon okay and if i look at this particular uh, uh, generalized sl problem this is actually look x x x so this is homogeneous you get that part right and this is linear i don't see any y over dependence over here so that's good so just want to highlight this particular equation the de that i'm dealing with is homogeneous as well as it is linear so the solution is not too bad so it's kind of important that i tie it back to what i've been doing okay so i'll give you a couple of uh you know uh, r of x is equal to one q of x is equal to zero p of x is equal to one a is equal to zero b is equal to l a1 is equal to a2 is equal to one b1 is equal to b2 is equal to zero so let's see what happens to this particular question so let's go up here so here is what it says it says rx is one okay so that becomes um, let's write it so it becomes d dx of y prime so that's the first one let's look at the second term what happens my q x, x, x is zero so that's gone and this p of x is one so i'm gonna get myself 
gamma y is equal to zero. Right, right hand side is given. How about the boundary conditions that I have? So here's what I say for that. Um, a is zero. This is L. Okay, so far so good. And what I said was all these derivatives are gone and this stay. A1 is equal to one. So then what I get myself is this. Uh, this equation subjected to y0 is equal to zero and y l is equal to zero. So look at this equation. Uh, the only thing that I need to discuss is, you know, this is the first derivatives derivative, so it becomes a second derivative like y double prime, right? So if I go up to the beginning of the segment, so you can clearly see here, this is it. Except, I, I call this gamma this time, alpha square. This is the boundary conditions that I obtained. So this is this very equation. So I was, a, I was solving regular storm level problem so far, okay? And the second one I wanna highlight now is I can make this substitution. I can so call Rx is equal to one, same thing. Qx is equal to zero, Px is equal to one, A is zero, B is L. So far it's identical to the first case. Then I have A1, A1, A2 is equal to zero, but this time I want B1 is equal to B2 is equal to one. So you see here what I did. So if you compare these two, same, 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 different, different. So I has said this was one, now it's zero. So what will happen is, I'm not gonna write it, but you'll see that I'll get the second. So this will be now, um, I have these primes present, this is gone. So now this will be the second version of the equation that I dealt with, do you remember that? So this is my second equation that I dealt with. So, um, so far uh, what I've been doing is aligned with the regular storm level problem. So why don't I go ahead and write the properties of this so that we have a good understanding. Properties of regular storm level problem. The first property that we have is I have infinite number of eigenvalues. Infinite number of real eigenvalues. As you've seen uh, in both cases, I got myself infinite number of real values, right? That n was one, two, three, four, if we're, if we're going to the infinity. The second one is kind of important. I have this each eigenvalue as one corresponding eigenfunction. Okay. Uh, except non zero multiples. Because I can do like uh, what you've seen at back there was, you know, there was a C1, right? There was a C2. So I can simply, let me go back and explain. C2 here, then I dropped it, right? So I don't have the C2 when I write diagonal function. So if you put this, but there, those are not going to be linearly independent anyway. So it's not going to matter. So the third one is eigenfunctions corresponding to different eigenvalues are linearly independent. Okay, so this is related to the orthogonal function properties that I discussed before, so I'm not gonna go back there again. Um, but also another one is related to orthogonality is eigenfunctions are orthogonal with respect to my weight function, which is p of x, okay, in this particular interval that I'm dealing with. All right, let's go ahead and solve a question to illustrate these uh, concepts and properties, etc. So y double prime plus my y is equal to zero, prefer alpha square, but, and this boundary condition is, I'm subjecting this particular equation to y zero is equal to zero, sounds familiar, and y one plus y prime of one is equal to zero okay okay let's go for it um, I have done at the beginning of this module but this is how the solution will look like right it's going to be cosine of alpha x plus c2 of sine alpha x let's use the first boundary condition so y0 which is going to be c1 cosine 0 plus c2 sine 0 is equal to 0 sine 0 is 0 cosine 0 is 1 so you can see from here that I will get my C1 is equal to zero. Otherwise, this is not gonna be satisfied. So then my Y, C1 is zero, so it's gonna be simply C2 sine alpha X. Okay, in order to write my second boundary condition, I will have to take a derivative of this as well. So let's write Y prime 
and it's fairly straightforward alpha c2 cosine alpha x okay and now let's look at the second boundary condition so i'm going to calculate this at one i'm going to calculate this at one and i sum them up okay fine c2 sine alpha plus alpha c2 cosine alpha i simply inserted x is equal to one will be equal to zero so you can see c2s cancel over here so i got myself sine alpha plus alpha cosine alpha is equal to zero um, why don't I go ahead and divide both sides by cosine? So it's going to be tangent of the alpha plus alpha is equal to zero. So from here, you're going to get that the final answer will be tangent of alpha is equal to minus alpha. So this will be the solution. So these are going to be my eigenvalues. Okay. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and do this solution in terms of the graphical. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. I'm back. So basically what I plot over here is tangent on alpha. What I will do is looking at this particular solution, tangent alpha is equal to minus alpha. So I'm going to also plot um, with a different color. Let's go with blue. Um, y is equal to minus x. So it's something like that. Okay. So now what we will do is we will look at where these two intersects and that will be my solution, right? So I have there, I have here, I have there. And if I go like this, the alpha value for this will be right around two. I mean, it's not going to be identical to two. This will be, let's say, 4.9-ish, and this will be, let's say, 8-ish, okay? So those will be my uh, solutions, for the first three eigenvalues, okay? And I can also write the corresponding eigenfunction, and those will be, when all said and done, will be y is equal to sine of 2x, over here it's going to be y is equal to sine of 4.9x, and over here it's going to be sine of 8x, okay? And obviously, this goes to infinity. These are just, the, you know, one, two, three representative examples for you, okay? Um, but I want to also highlight one thing from these, uh, you know, what does it say? Eigenfunctions are orthogonal with respect to the px in AB. So looking at p of x over here, you can see that right here. So it's multiplied by the lambda. So lambda uh, alpha square, which I have uh, is 1 over here. You can see the question that we have. Is one over here right so for that reason my uh, sine values that goes to infinity is an orthogonal set with respect to the weight function which is one in, on, on, in our case on the interval zero to one okay that kind of wraps it up for me I'll be back with the uh, partial differential equations thank you for watching